In the studio tonight, we have the new futuristic power bank from our friends at Charge. This is the Charge Geek 140, and it should have just gone live on Kickstarter, so make sure you check out the link in the description down below if you want to buy one. And you may think that power banks are not exciting, but ever since we got hold of the Charge Geek Storm with its beautiful OLED display, we've always tried to cover their products. And this new Charge Geek 140 is no exception. Now the 140 is a compact power bank with an all black, transparent aesthetic look. We get the same brilliant vibrant display that we do get on the 170 Prism, but Charge has upgraded this smart display with larger fonts, more user-friendly UI to improve the readability. Now, as you can see on the screen, we get a lot of information here. Now on the left half of the display, you can see at the top, there's a time. Now that's a time to either discharge the power bank or charge that power bank. Below there, we have a percentage that is remaining on the power bank. We do have a little symbol there to the right which will flash when it's actually charging or discharging. On the right hand side, at the top we've got the discharge rate, and at the bottom we've got the charge rate, and that's in wattage. And it's really, really handy because not only will you know how fast you're actually drawing the power from the power bank to the device, you'll also be able to tell how much time you've got remaining. But as a reviewer, it's also really handy to know what the actual device is drawing in watts from a power bank. With regards to the size and the weight, they've made this device 50% thinner than their original Shard Geek 100. And I have to be honest, considering the power this power bank packs, it does feel pretty slim in the hand, so it's very easy to grab it and to throw it straight into your daily carry bag. It comes in at either one pound or 0.47 kilograms, so it isn't too heavy either. Looking at the side, you can see we've got a 100 watt USB-C port for your higher power items, such as your laptop or handheld or iPad, etc. And then we've also got a 40 watt USB-A port to cover your lower power devices, such as your phones, smartwatches, or wireless headsets. Now, both of these ports can be used simultaneously, giving us a maximum power output of 140 watts, hence its name, the actual Shard Geek 140. So let's quickly test it then, and we're gonna plug it straight into an actual laptop and see how we get on. So I've got here a nice little Yoga Ultrabook. Let's get it powered up, and we're gonna plug this straight in. All right. So let's pop this straight into the USB-A 100 watt port. Now that we've plugged it in, you see the display automatically fires up and we can see that this laptop currently is drawing, well, it's just dropped down 49 watts. It's taking from this power bank, you can see it is powered up. It doesn't need the full 100 watts unless we're really sort of like heavily utilizing it. But that's quite nice. We can see what this laptop is drawing at any given time point. And as this battery charges and it's idling away, that will gradually drop down. Now I want to also, whilst it's also taking power from the actual laptop, I'm going to plug in my iPhone 11. So there you go, you can see my iPhone 11 is also now charging. And we're drawing power now from both the laptop and the phone. Hopefully that now makes sense. So you can see the power with which the, both these devices are utilizing this power bank. So I want to just quickly fire up something a bit demanding on the actual laptop here as well. So you can see we are still charging. Uh, and I'm instantly now, now that I'm actually utilizing something that's gonna be like hitting this CPU a bit, or this integrated GPU, we're gonna start increasing the wattage on the power bank. I mean, this realistically will double the power that I could game on this laptop away from an outlet, which is really handy for something this sort of size. Right, so let's just run the benchmark on this as an example. So as you can see, phone's still charging, powering the laptop through a game, and the actual power bank itself, we're drawing about still only 60 odd watts. So, I mean, these integrated GPUs on these AMD Ryzen laptops are pretty impressive. But as you can see there, it's running the game perfectly. Oh, peaked at about 75 watts there for a second. 78, 82. So as you can see, we're drawing up to about 80 watts in this configuration here. And I'm actually charging this Ryzen laptop whilst playing a game on the Ryzen laptop and also charging my iPhone 11. So this 140 watt little power bank is pretty impressive of what it can actually do. We hear the fan kicking up on the laptop now. Uh, and as you can see, we're still sitting in the 80 watts. But what is impressive is it will tell you, you'll say I wasn't fully charged, but it's now telling me I've got about 24 minutes currently left on the power bank whilst gaming and charging my iPhone and charging the laptop. So it's really handy that you can see what we've got available on the power bank itself when we're using it. So not only could this be really great for obviously your Ultrabooks, your phones, your iPads, but if you've got maybe a Legion Go or a Steam Deck or one of the handhelds, this is a great way of improving the battery life while gaming on the go. So it really is a handy device. 
Now below the ports we do have the power button and it is a long press to turn the display on or again a long press to turn the display off. But with the display on, a quick double tap of that power button will change the USB-C from the usual high voltage devices to a lower voltage charge state. So if you've got a lower voltage device you want to charge by the USB-C cable, double tapping that power button will allow you to do that. And charge provide the usual great length yellow USB-C to USB-C cable and this will allow you to charge the power bank at up to 65 watts to restore the power in your power bank or you can use it to push out to a USB-C device at up to 100 watts as we mentioned earlier. You also get in the box a nice little material bag that you can pop in your power bank and the cable to keep it in pristine condition when you want to transport it maybe your laptop bag or your daily carry bag. So that's a nice little touch. Now Charge have used four Samsung 21700 battery cells in this device to give it a whopping 20,000 milliamp capacity. Now this means it is also airline approved at 72 watt hours and it would fully charge my iPhone 11 over six times before I need to recharge the power bank back up. Now the cells themselves maintain at least 80% capacity at over 800 charge cycles. So this power bank is designed to last. A lot of cheaper cells are only guaranteed for 300 cycles. And the SMO components on the compact PCB offer safe and reliable circuit operation. So this could really be the last power bank you ever need to buy. So let's talk about the price. And if you buy this now on Kickstarter, they're offering an early bird discount of 27%. But you can pick one of these up at 79 US dollars instead of the usual 109 US dollars. And for full disclosure, we do get a small commission on any of the sales. And this greatly does help support the channel so we can keep bringing you great content. They also offer a two pack for $141 instead of the usual 218. So make sure you click the link below if you wanna grab your charge power bank now. Well, that's it for today. But as usual, post any comments or questions down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching.